Hunter x Hunter episode 101. Can't believe I just said that. Ikago X and X Lightning. Oh yeah, there's octopus. Clue just let loose. I'm here for this Clue arc. He's not that bad. I can't hate him. He's just a cute little octopus. He's a very likable little parasite. Clue will just <laughs> he will just not be denied. You're one of us now. You're you're my new mascot. Did you see what's down there? Yeah, they're frothing down there. Yeah, there, there they are frothing. So what you're saying is if I drop you... No, I became his mascot. You're gonna shoot him down for me, Ikalgo. <laughs> Doesn't really feel like it's gonna be a deal because the clue is gonna get what he wants. Pretty sure that's been ten, it's been ten seconds. Drop him. It's gonna be a very merciful slow count. Time to turn on the charm. Not the tragic backstory I expected. <laughs> Glorious. Okay, noble. In my next life, I'm born a squid. <laughs> noble dream. Yeah, yeah. Can't let a good mascot go to waste. <laughs> Something about him is likable. Hard to explain. How is it that you can feel who's an ally before they become allies? Nah, who's just gonna destroy him? He thought he wanted to be a squid, but what he really wanted was a friend. Move over, Gon. A new best friendship has started. Man, I remember when I saw Kalua mercilessly kill those two guys in the hallway. I never would have anticipated what a sweet kitty actually is. Dude just told a parasite that they would have been friends in another life. Here I thought Gon was the one with sympathy for the ants. What did Kalua see in him that resonated with him? Was it the not betraying a friend? Was it the dream of being something better? Is Gon the squid? Octopi are beautiful too, Kalua. No, he's fine. He's about to rip out of this. <laughs> Give me a reason. Look at that bloodlust, though. Bar double. Well, what is that, a target? Ooh, middle aged Aquaman, the next villain. You have become a dartboard? You have become a dartboard. Cool, getting shot with every manner of living thing. Flea, fish. Oh, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. So we can attack from the comfort of his man cave. When we pull out a pin, we can pull out a badge, right? Good thing he's not that great at darts. Are you can see those. Dartboard. The triple damage? There's no way to defend against this, except for removing that badge. But is he playing count up or count down? That's critical. Oh, brother, I thought she was just a bar floozy. She can be both! <laughs> Does that mean he has to find their little lair? This is one of those, like, I don't know, not that impressive powers that ends up being devastating. Oh, it's count down! <laughs> That is really high stakes. I guess he's good at darts after all. Oh, 
彼に教えてやったらそこまで親切じゃないさギャーギャー泣きわめいて命乞いでもされれば逆に信用できるけどさ How do you figure out where they are? Or how do you make them miss? こんな死に方も悪くないなとか言われたらさ Is she not wearing anything? まだまだだ What's the plan here? What's the plan? It doesn't look great. It would, and it sucks that it's these people, these siblings. Okay, alright. The fact that he's not moving makes me think he's got a plan or idea. We yell real loud. The double 20. He got a double 20. Oh, those are clothes. Those are clothes. Okay, thank God. He did some assassin stuff. He, sh he shut off his blood flow. He did something. I mean, you can have this kind of trust and innocence in other people if you are really competent in yourself and are capable enough to handle situations. Then it doesn't matter. If you feel you have things locked down for yourself enough that you know or feel assured you can get what you want or need whenever you want or need it, what does it really matter if people lie to you, try to deceive you, speak ill of you? It's more of a reflection and weakness for them as opposed to you. At a certain point for certain people, others harboring ill will towards you becomes a point of sympathy from you for them. Like, you poor thing. And also naivety. What, are, what is the word of an ant to a god? There we go, settled the matter. Go having learned nothing. Once again, go on just having a big enough energy to absorb other people's energy. The gravity. That is a terrifying side of Gon. This is the second time we're seeing it in the episode, too. <laughs> this was not a very good strategic move coming out here. I mean, I get they want to eat, but... The more I see this guy, the more I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I love it. I love it. Kula just doesn't waste any time. Like, we don't get to spend eight episodes on them and their little backstories. Kula just kills. Okay, okay, they're pulling a demon slayer and talking after they're dead and decapitated. We shielded his body. Those reflexes, though. Plenty of time, you say. Plenty of time. Kalua glow up arc continues. Time, I get plenty of time. That's a lot. Knows the game of darts. Was he keeping score? Oh, I didn't even know that. Countdown, down, yeah. I never played where you need to hit double, the double ring, though. Then again, I'm not a professional, and I only played drunk. Where did darts fit into Clue's training? His parents are like, your assassin training will include physical beatings, electricity, darts, and poisoning. And he's got the whole psychological profile on this guy, too. I also happen to know you're a loser and have a very creepy relationship with your sister. You know, I'm actually glad they stayed alive for this. That's what I'm wondering. It fit in somewhere. Why though? Man, they were thorough. I mean, you still gotta be like at 1 HP though. Where's our friendly octopus? He took a lot of damage. As close as he's come to death. It's irritating me. It was, it was this guy. This guy. Octopus Buddy. Octopus Buddy. What hit? The electricity jolting thing? The neurological hacking?
Octopus buddy. Taco. <laughs> Not a time like this. Oh man, in another universe, Octopus just leaves him to die. Saving your life. It's pretty great. That's why. Save your breath. This octopus following its heart. <laughs> it's all unexpected, but great. Octopus and friend was not on my bingo card either. Here we are. I feel like this was inspired by Final Fantasy VI. I think at one point you even fight him in his sewer that looks just like this, but it's been a while. After seeing this dark guy in his power, in a new way, I've come to the conclusion that Nen is kind of scary because it's not even necessarily always about power. There's just so many forms it could take. It's like how I always felt in the Dragon Ball series. The most dangerous enemy wasn't Piccolo or whoever else Kid Goku fought, but that one dude who could turn people into carrots by touching them. That's just a game over event about Ikago. I think out of all the shows I've watched, Hunter x Hunter is one of the, the most difficult to predict in terms of the plot points. Like when this arc started, I thought there was going to be a whole thing with Kurt and Anne's factioning off, some of them joining the humans and that being key in defeating them. That was before the Royal Guard was introduced, which basically made all of them irrelevant. And Kurt had his moment, but it was more for him as opposed to the arc as a whole. He kind of just got some closure and effed off. But here it is suddenly with Akago. He actually is an ant that has some heart and is cool, as Kalua put it, and does make me a little less quick to be like death to all ants. It was a really great touch making him mascot-like and kind of cute as bizarre as that is to say about an octopus parasite. Although he's a cute little mascot, I can't imagine it being really cool if he ends up being significant through taking over someone else, through taking over some other enemy as a host. Another thing about this episode, it seems like Gonin Kalua's state of mind and ethos is kind of conjoining. Like both of them have the same thing of, I'm willing to see the good in you, but very happy to destroy you if it isn't there. Very, you know, in circle, out circle. There's a conscientiousness forming in both of them, maybe due to their friendship.